The Streamer Awards is an annual award show hosted by QTC, sponsored by Twitch. This is its second year running, and it already has some huge sponsorships and a large audience. That being said, some of the biggest streamers seemed indifferent or frustrated with the streaming community at the event, which is interesting. The first thing that stuck out to me were QTC's jokes, especially in the opening. Phase went from almost bankrupt. Uh, apparently the only thing they can't phase up is their stock. <laughs> It's the second annual Streamer Awards, and this year's show, we've made some changes. We dropped some categories like Best GTA Streamer, and added new ones like Best at Convincing Their Audience They Still Deserve a Platform. <laughs> now, my immediate reaction was to judge this on comedic merit and audience response. The audience reaction is often mixed or uncomfortable, which makes sense because a lot of these jabs are quite personal and not told with much tact. That's not to say I'm against offensive jokes whatsoever, rather that the audience, particularly the other streamers in the audience, did not seem ready for this deprecating approach. However, the more I mull this over, the more I genuinely appreciate QTC's approach. Twitch banned gambling this year, which was great because it shows that they're willing to take a stance and they're concerned for their viewers and their content creators, just not concerned enough to check how deep the foam pit is. <laughs> I know the joke is aimed at Twitch, but it only works because someone broke their back in the foam pit, which is totally fine. I don't think any joke should be off limits, especially when done in a setting like this where it's obvious it's for the sake of entertainment, which makes me wonder, is QTC's approach out of spite or acceptance? The constant exploitation and objectification of women is exhausting. If you are able to look at women who are not selling themselves or this was after QTC found out there was explicit deepfake material of her and other creators widely available to the public. As you may know, Ethan Klein laughed at this on his podcast, which QTC was not very fond of. And a lot of people are actually asking the H3, the H3 clip. Uh, he's apologized to me. I told him it was really f***ed up. I said, that's really f***ed up. You turned like something awful into a, into a meme. And that sucks that you would do that, especially as someone that like I know and associate with. Like, why would you do that to me? Like, I didn't instantly forgive him. I literally said, why would you do that to me? It's really f***ed up of you. But I do believe he's sorry. I think he shouldn't have done that. I think he knows he shouldn't have done that, but yeah, he's... I would argue that QTC writing and delivering a joke about somebody breaking their back goes a little bit further than Ethan Klein catching a case of the giggles about the deepfake situation. Which is why I ask if QTC's approach at the award show is out of spite or acceptance. Is this her lashing out at the community at large in an attempt to get even? Or is this an understanding that everyone, especially public figures, are fair game? I know the latter is a lot to hope for, but let's move on to others. The best MMORPG streamer of the year is... Asmongold! Hi guys, well, I guess if you're seeing this, it looks like I won. Best MMO streamer of the year. What a surprise, the two time. The best, uh, best way to say thank you is to just make more content. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So you can look forward to a bright 2023 of me watching YouTube videos, uh, reading Reddit posts, and then also reading YouTube comments after I watch the YouTube video. I'm really excited to be able to do that. It's gonna be super fun. Is this supposed to be a joke about the banality of his own content? He does give a sincere thanks, so it's hard to tell if this is self-aware or not. I know some streamers often joke about their content being lazy, but that doesn't make their content any less lazy. It's like Hassan acknowledging he's a hypocrite. It doesn't make it any better. You could argue that being aware of your faults and not doing anything about them is actually worse than just not being aware of them in the first place. Someone who does actually seem to care about the decline of their content is, surprisingly, Ludwig. Oh, streamer of the year. Didn't you win that last year? <laughs> yeah, but not nominated this year, so. <laughs> no, I just fell off. I fell off in a major way. I'm a fan of Doug Doug, and so I met him, and I, it's like, sh I'm too shy to say I've watched all your videos and stolen like half I of think them. I'll be honest, 95% of my streams, I look at what someone else did, I had a small little twist, and then I steal that sh I did felled off, so I'm not nominated this year, but about like two, three times a year, I like to do something that I feel like isn't wasting the viewer's time, and, and I hope this was that, and I hope I can do more of things that is not wasting your time. I'm like, bro, how do you do it? And you're like, yeah, I just like take care of myself. And I'm like, that's dumb. You're supposed to grind numbers because we all have a sick disease. No, we all have a sick disease where the numbers need to go I, higher. I we need no more viewers.
I hope this isn't a dismissal, but rather an understanding of how repetitive streaming content has become. Unlike Asmongold, Ludwig actually seems frustrated with the current quality of his work, although this could just be a cope that turns into an excuse. Either way, it can't be denied that the streaming community has a massive quantity over quality problem. Every year we see innovation from just chatting streamers as they push boundaries and ask the question, how can we do even less? And the winner is... Hassan Abi. Other than Valkyrie's joke about lazy content, there really isn't much to say about Hassan here. Well, there's a joke from QTC. Uh, Hassan is here tonight. Yeah. Austin is yelling loudly. Uh, Hassan is famous for being the first socialist to become influential without being sh by the CIA. Hassan is basically an Amazon employee. I don't think the CIA is too concerned with him. Let's be real, Hassan is more of a Jimmy Kimmel than a Che Guevara. If Hassan's rhetoric was that revolutionary on his stream, then he wouldn't be allowed on Twitch. I know this is just a joke from QTC, but there are some people in Hassan's audience who think he's some sort of revolutionary figure. He's not. He's a useful idiot at best, and a grifter at worst. I will say though, Hassan did a pretty good job with the red carpet interviews. He's far more lively here than he ever is on stream. It's gotta be the AT&T sponsorship that's got him so excited. While the production quality at the Streamer Awards is probably the highest you'll find in a live stream, the self-celebratory nature of an award show clashes with some of the critiques that the streamers have for the industry. For example, a 13-minute edit talking up the streaming community is followed by a joke about public relations, alluding to the disgusting incidents from OTK over the last year. I know this sort of juxtaposition has been used in other award shows, like Ricky Gervais at the Golden Globes, but QTC isn't just the host, she's in charge of the streamer awards itself. Given how rough the past year or so has been in the streaming community, as well as some of the streamers' attitudes at the award show, I don't think Twitch fame as we know it is sustainable, or even benign. When talking about serious problems in the streaming community, like parasocial behavior and power dynamics, it seems like all we can get are little jokes with the tiniest of insights, or sometimes an overly emotional response which doesn't do anybody any good. It's kinda crazy this year, like, I get nominated twice and I, I went to awards, and it's like, this has been my worst year, like in terms of career and personal life, I'm just trash. And then it's like, I went twice, where was everybody at the last three years when I was doing good? You know, like Game Awards, Esports Awards, where the f*** you guys were at, man? I was rolling, yo. I was doing so good. And now it's like, I don't know, my worst year and I went to awards. Anyway, thank you very much. I'm not too familiar with XQC's content or what he's been through in the last year, but I do know that earlier in the award show, QTC was making jokes about the adept situation, which is, again, totally fine as long as she realizes that we can make fun of her too, which is what happened at the real streamer awards hosted by Glitch Poachers. And we have best swatting, best apology, best controversy, this is an important one, talking about her cover-up of Mizkif's situation, completely unrelated to the deep fake scenario. Yeah, Ethan's having a hard time holding it together. I, I don't care. I'm just gonna laugh. <laughs> Pretty hilarious. It's Especially exhausting. with me. It's like I'm laughing at Ethan, maybe a little bit at QTC. Who, ca who cares? <laughs> I just felt it'd be fun to kind of throw Maya under the bus right now, so. Okay, this is getting a little too rough. This is starting to get hard to watch. I forgot that it gets a little rough. Oh, jeez. This is a very classy category. You could vote on a couple of different merits here. Do you find them the most attractive? Do you think their interaction with the deepfake scenario was particularly funny or entertaining? You know, there's a lot of angles you could really take with this one, you know? Was QTC crying as funny as Ethan Klein thought? Maybe that gives her some extra points. You never know. Anything could happen. Also, if you listen closely, the audience gives us a nice little soundbite after XQC accepts his award. I'm in the crowd. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Did you catch that? The closed captions pick it up as, so natural, but it definitely sounds more like, yeah, he's on Adderall. Yeah, he's on Adderall. <laughs> Reddit seems to think that Your Rage Gaming was the one to say this, but I'm not sure. What I can tell you is that the one with the problem doesn't seem to be XQC. It's Minx. Minx attended the after party and got kicked out and inevitably got the party shut down. I said, Minx, you can come sit on the floor with all the other streamers. You have to promise me one thing. And she was like, what? Anything. And I said, do not drink. Be completely sober. You need to promise me this.
like promise me and she was like i promise i'll do anything i get to the party um she's wasted uh she is getting escorted out by security because she's trying to throw heaters into the pool i heard she was trying to throw saikuno in the pool Oi, the full extent of the mink situation is a story for another day all right that's gonna have to do it for this one shout out to the best subscriber squad in all of youtube i hope everyone has a wonderful day Okay, I gotta, I'm gonna come.